Mr. President, how are you? Since leaving office, Bill Clinton has made his own health and the health of the country his top domestic priority. I saw it firsthand when he invited me to Little Rock. Last time we spoke a few weeks ago, you said uh, you were going to be really strict on the diet. You were doing a pretty good job, you said. Yeah, I'm doing, I'm being more, more strict now. Are you? Mm -hmm. So, so. Yeah, but the time I have my 65th birthday, I want to weigh what I did when I went home from law school in 1973. Wow, that's, that's, a, that's, that's what I'm working on. That's a grand about. ambition. President Clinton's diet, no meat, no dairy, almost no oil, got me thinking how different what he's eating now as compared to what he used to eat and what most of us still eat. Make a habit of high fat, high cholesterol meals like this and you can physically see the beginnings of heart disease. For starters, your blood actually looks different. So let's start by looking at what healthy blood looks like after it has been centrifuged or spun. You can see there are two components. This bottom layer represents the blood cells and this top layer represents the plasma. The plasma is a clear yellow layer that contains mostly water and electrolytes. Here's what happens to your blood if you follow an unhealthy diet. The top layer is white and cloudy. It's just laden with heart-clogging fat and cholesterol. You have some easy to remember adages about how people can decide what they should or should not eat. We know what they shouldn't eat. That is <laughs> oil, dairy, meat, fish, and chicken. What do we want them to eat? We want them to eat all those whole grains for their cereal bread and pasta, beans, vegetables, yellow, red, green, and fruit. Nothing with a mother, nothing with a face. You can imagine the meat, egg, and dairy associations think that's a terrible idea. A plant-based diet like Dr. Esselstyn's runs up against our meat-loving culture. Most doctors eat meat because most Americans eat meat. And so if they don't really see for themselves or their own families why it might be a good idea to cut back or even cut meat out of your diet altogether, then they may not be so inclined to recommend it for their patients. Even doctors who do see the benefits of the Esselstyn diet may not recommend it to patients. Anybody who's able to do that diet can have dramatic success. The problem is, is that many people are unable or unwilling to make these changes. And so in my practice, I try to take you know, baby steps one step at a time. And Dean Ornish says when it comes to diet, it's not all or nothing. One of the interesting findings in all of our studies was that the more people change their diet and lifestyle, the more they improved in direct proportion. 